Well, it's easy to get into a routine of playing it safe in life and settle for something that's just okay or even good enough. But what if, what if, just think for a minute, God wants more for you. What if he desires to give you his absolute best? It's time for you to take courage and start believing again. It's time to have crazy faith. We're all ready to hear about it and talk yes. about it. And uh, we want to hear the story of how crazy faith originated and what has happened since. Well, I am a living testimony of crazy faith. I was yes. telling some of the beautiful ladies before, I started off as the sound man at my church, mm -hmm. and yeah. now I'm the lead pastor yeah. of this church. And, and musician so, and singer. Yeah, musician. Because you know I started as singer. No, you are a singer. No, You're I'm, still a singer. I'm, no, just, no, I'm, I'm still singing, but I'm just saying, I, I never had it in my repertoire to do this. Yeah. And so I, that's I mean, how God works. Yeah. He, he only gives you enough of the journey to make you take the next step. Yeah while he so still good. has an amazing plan for you that he yeah. can't tell you yet because most of us would run. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? We totally and, would. And that's, and that's kind of where this whole thing started. I was on a sabbatical, and um, because I'm a music guy, I listen to all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And so um, I was listening to CeeLo Green, Crazy. And I just loved the melody and all this other stuff. But I heard this verse that I never heard before. It was the third verse, and it said, um, my heroes live their life out on the limb. And I remember I want to be just like mm -hmm. them. Wow. And it hit yes. me, like, when I think about all of the heroes of our faith, yeah. it, it's they always lived their life on the limb. Abraham and Noah and yeah. David. And, and this church that we have now come to know and love in the world today mm -hmm. doesn't look like the heroes that lived their life on the limb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Going when God said, hey, go to the land, I will show you. Yeah. Right. Like, uh, or, or, hey, tell Mo Pharaoh, let, let, let my people go. And then you get to an impasse where the army's behind A you. And the, an ark when there's no rain. No, ar no. So it's like, those are the type crazy of things faith. that is crazy faith. Yeah. And I, I told uh, my church, I said, we are not going to be ones who play it safe, but we're going to see yes. what living this thing at the edge of crazy and faith yes. would produce yes. for us. And it has produced so much. You know, your family was here with us at Day Star Today, which we loved having your mom oh, and dad and them. your brothers. Thank God for that foundation yes, that you had in the things of God. And even the fact that you surround yourself with family, just like we do here. Mm -hmm. Family is so important to God. So I mean, important. it is the first thing that he instituted, right? Yep. And so um, I love the fact that you have that foundation because now that God is doing these supernatural things through you and your church, uh, you, we really are witnessing a crazy faith. Yeah. Now, Rebecca asked me this question. She, she said, oh, you started your church. She said, no, you actually, the church had already been started there. Yeah, in Tulsa. so this church started in 1999 mm -hmm. um, by Bishop Gary and Debbie McIntosh, and they are white, uh, middle-aged uh, believers <laughs> oh who gosh. felt that uh, God told them to start a church in the hood. Yeah. So our church started. I saw the picture in, in the passing of the baton. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was They're, thinking, like, who was, so, who's so that what man? ended up happening was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, in 1921, there was one of the worst race riots um, on what they called Black Wall Street. Had the most um, uh, millionaires per capita and business owners in that area. And then because of a racial incident, it was all burned down. Mm -hmm. and, um, wow. and so he was down in that area. God told him to take off his shoes, and he said, reverse the curse. Mm -hmm. And oh so gosh. he went there in 1999 to start Greenwood Christian Center after the Greenwood race riots. Wow. And, yeah. um, and the church uh, name changed um, before I was the pastor to Transformation Church because it spoke not just to the area, but what we were trying to do in that area. And then he handed, handed the baton to a young black wild man. That was running sound. That was running sound. <laughs> and, and, but you just think about reversing the curse. His obedience wow. allowed me now wow. to be touching Ooh. the whole That's world. Another whole with and the you two oh, no, like true. joined hands and came together and were able to, you know, have that unity and work. It's like it's gone so much and farther. The thing about yeah. your church is it is so multicultural, oh. not just multicultural, but no. multi-generational. Yeah, as well. so if you come to Transformation Church, yeah. you wouldn't know who the pastor was. Yeah. You because it's white, black, young, old three generations sitting on the same you mean road kind together. kind of the way it's supposed to be? Like yes. heaven. Hello? <laughs> and, and, and it's one of those things, but it was very clear from the beginning. God told me four things when I started pastoring because the church had been going for 15 years. Yeah. And then in that 16th year, me and my wife, Natalie, took over as the pastors. Wow. And he said, Michael, I want this church to be multi-ethnic, multi-generational, multiplying, multi-campus. Mm. And I stood there with my knees shaking on the first day <laughs> of that transition. And I told the people that 
And it, we were not that at all. But if you come to Transformation Church today, you will see wow. everything that God said. Were you it's scared so awesome. when that happened? What are you talking about? <laughs> Freaking out. What are you talking about? And you were so young. Yeah, yeah, I was 27. Okay, but oh what gosh. did Natalie think? Because you've never told us that side. So Natalie um, was like, are you sure? Because <laughs> she's. we've been together since she was 14 and I was 15. Yeah. Aww. So we're high school sweethearts. And That's the cutest. Yeah, it's the cutest and the craziest. And you're, <laughs> she had to watch me go from a boy to a man. And and like, you know what I'm saying? And you're the music guy, though, to her, right? Yeah, so... I mean, you're the, like, we, the singer, I was on songwriter, tour, musician. I was producing, so yeah. she thought we were just going to be in studios everywhere. Yeah. And so when God called us into ministry, because it wasn't just me, it was us, mm -hmm. um, we've been in this cool journey of figuring out um, our unique giftings and callings. And I just thank God for His grace that gives us opportunity to become. Yes, and um, it's just been a fun journey. So, yeah, we sometimes she looks at me and is like, Do you, are you sure this is what we're supposed <laughs> to be doing? And then we both come back like, yeah. So it's like about how many were in the church when the baton was handed to about you? About 350 About 350. Mm -hmm. So at that time, what was your vision? To make it. Like, <laughs> my vision and especially was... when there's that drastic of a transition, oh, yeah. usually everything yeah, goes, goes down. down. Did you well, wear it like a three-piece suit? I wear suits every Sunday. <laughs> I was trying to, <laughs> was trying to get everybody to like me. I just went, please come back. But it was one of those things. And the crazy thing is I lost all my staff except two people the next year. Uh, wow. And it was one of those moments of crazy faith where God was wanting to teach me, you were called to this besides anybody else. Yeah. He took away all my crutches, all the yes, people who wow. worked with me in youth ministry. Yeah. And that's when everything started moving. And God's so faithful. He sustained us. Um, yeah. For every person that left, at least one person came. It's kind and of that addition though? by subtraction. Yes, it hurt. Yeah. It was, it was, I had people who literally told me like, God's called you to this, like leave the church. And, and, but what it was doing, it was teaching me to depend on God. Exactly. And, oh, um, so and I would not be here today yeah. had I not had those tests. Yeah. And those, really, they weren't obstacles. They were opportunities to learn. Yeah. And now, when people are talking about me on the internet or this, I don't know. Because it's it easy to get dependent on people. That's yeah. so that easy. That was one of the first lessons that I learned in my 20s when we got into Christian television as uh, there was an employee that just did everything. I mean, because, I mean, camera operators were working for free. The sound guy was, you know. I mean, it was just volunteers. And this guy was actually a paid employee, but then his father died, and he had to go back and take over the family business. Well, he was like the director and the producer. And, the, of, right. and, and so when we lost him, I was just devastated. And the Lord taught me, he said, he said, I, I never want you to be so dependent mm -hmm. upon someone that you're more dependent upon them than you are me. Yeah. So that was one of the early lessons. And then years later, when I learned that, God brought him back. Wow. And he's been one of our, our but longest you know what? employees. You passed a really important test because you didn't get bitter or offended. And I feel like one of the enemy's biggest yeah. strategy for people in church is he tries to get them offended or yeah. hurt by church people so yeah. they'll leave. So the beautiful thing about the story that all the people who either had to fire or let go or anything like that, mm -hmm. all of them except one still go to the church. <gasps> no way! Yeah. So yeah. it was like, and they serve, one serves on worship, one, like, and so it's oh one of those goodness. things that God was really, it was more about me than it was them. It's more about you. Do you think that Satan, like, I'm sure there had to be moments of discouragement. Oh, yeah, so definitely. do you feel like Satan uses discouragement as a mm -hmm. tactic to get us off course? What, what do you feel like so in I, that? I, I tell people this all the time. I said, that's his first aim is to steal, kill, and destroy. Like to, to send discouragement, to steal from you or kill from you or destroy. And then I say this, and a lot of people, uh, they, they're not ready for this. I said, but what the enemy can't destroy, he distracts. Mm. That's true. And so, so a lot of times, wow. I don't think discouragement is even his greatest uh, tool. I think distraction. distraction. Yeah. So if, if, if I'm supposed to be focused on this, but I'm focused on all this and all this and all this, and that's why social media, as great as it can be, how it's as dangerous as it can right. be, or being in certain friend groups, how great it can be, it can be, or even success. Mm -hmm. uh, now I have the money to go anywhere, but are you supposed to be at home? Or you know what I'm wow. saying? Yeah. And so what the enemy mm -hmm. can't do in, in destroying or depressing or any of those other D words, mm -hmm. he'll distract you. Yeah. That's and, right. and, and that's where a lot of people, especially in the body of Christ, get off.